I was heavily influenced at a young age uh, playing the drums, mainly because of my father, who's also a drummer, and he's been playing his whole life, and he was the main reason why I got influenced and inspired to play the drums. Um, you know, he, he would show me so many drummers like Buddy Rich, Neil Peart, Dave Weckl, Vinnie Caliuta, all these uh, famous world-class drummers, and I just remember hearing all that music and it just blew my mind at such a young age and so probably when I was about 15 years old that's when I started taking drumming a little bit more serious and then I got my first gifted drum set which was a Mapix V series and it was all covered in red and it had big old toms and a 22 inch kick drum and and I just remember those drums were so big for me at the time. I was already kind of playing very timid and scared. And as it is, I was already kind of shy behind the instrument. And I felt like it was too much power for me to handle. Sometimes even to this day, when I get behind a drum set, I feel excited and frightened at the same time. It's kind of weird, but it's almost like it's like if there's an accident waiting to happen. Um, but I guess it's just my inner voice in my head talking to myself. But uh, the other reason why I loved playing the drums is because this is an instrument you could easily pick up, you know, because all you needed was a pair of sticks and you just hit the drums. <laughs> Seems simple enough, you know, versus picking up a guitar or piano that kind of requires much more attention and much more detail. Uh, but that's what I liked about it you know it was simple yet complex the more you dive into it and one of the reasons for me personally is because it gave me confidence and it helped me channel my short attention span and put all my energy into the drums and get me focused for a while <laughs> so once I understood how to put all the puzzle pieces together my brothers and I as a band we would always perform for our grandparents uh, on 4th of July and just we made it a tradition to always play for our grandparents on that day and then I think within the next year my brothers and I had our first official gig at Starbucks it was an outside gig and I think it was for like an hour because we had another band coming playing right after us um, but we just wanted to really jam and we we didn't care how much we were getting paid but I do remember most of my family did show up and support us and uh, and that right after that, I started high school band, marching band, concert band. And I think during that time, that's when I still felt very uncomfortable. I still felt very like uncertain, like I didn't feel worthy to even play this instrument. Um, but that's kind of where it started for me uh, in the beginning. When I started high school, there was a huge dramatic change for me musically as a drummer. and I got to experience marching band, concert band, even jazz band. And those four years of being in high school as a percussionist, they were probably the most educational part of my life. And I really enjoyed every minute of it. But there's a part of me that started realizing this isn't what I wanted to do completely. And so I felt like I started shifting away from the percussion world after high school because I felt like I just wasn't worthy as a percussionist in so many ways. And and I just felt like this isn't me anymore. And I didn't stand out or, you know, I felt like I just kind of blended in. And I have so much love and respect for percussion, but I just didn't have a voice anymore. I felt like it didn't really matter as much. And it also had a lot to do with my dad in a way because he was my percussion teacher since I was in middle school and all through my high school years. So, I mean, he was the actual percussion director 
and my teacher probably for about six seven years straight and being the son of a teacher was very hard to live up to you know um, because if I made mistakes or didn't do certain ensembles or solos even goofed around it would show favoritism and that's what all the other kids assumed that all oh, because you're Mr. Avila's son this should be easy for you or you know they would always say you're probably the best percussionist here and I always had to tell them no I'm not my dad guys like look this is a completely different breed of music for me I don't feel like I'm worthy as a percussionist as my dad is and that was always the difficult part is that I felt the pressure of being a percussionist versus just being a drum set player and because my dad was a multi-talented percussionist it was kind of intimidating and I just couldn't keep up and I felt like I couldn't be in the same shoes as him but Growing up, watching my dad play the drums, I've always admired him, and I never wanted to let him down as a percussionist, as a student, or as a son. I just always wanted to make my dad proud. Like I said, it's because of my dad. I have this love for music and the art of drumming. And, you know, he has showed me so much music and he's surrounded me in music for the last 25, almost 30 years now, practically. And watching him play gigs since I was like five years old, it was like I was watching Buddy Rich or something because people would go up to him and they would smile at him they would shake his hand they're always complimenting him and that's kind of what I wanted to be and and when my dad plays the drums it makes people feel a certain way and he knows how to he knows how to draw a crowd closer to him and that's the biggest lesson I've learned from his teachings is developing that feel on the drums and that is something that is very hard to teach because that comes from within yourself and your heart. And that's something I will never forget and always cherish from him. sound of one of Dave Weckl's instructional drum videos that he did from the 80s and I'd wake up and come to the living room and see Adrian there sitting you know on the couch with the remote just rewinding so he could watch these drum fills replaying all these you know the drum along tracks that, that come with the DVD but that's just the type of drummer Adrian uh, has always been is a visual learner. He loved watching music DVDs of, you know, like instructional videos and then even like live DVD concerts. You know, some of my favorite bands like Rush, Dream Theater, The Police. That was just like how he got influenced. He would just watch them like a hawk. 
pause it, go run to his drum set, and just mimic exactly what he saw from whatever video he was watching. That's just how he learned. Uh, I know he always struggled uh, academically when it came to music, you know, like it just didn't click for him as well. It's just learning it from a visual aspect. And I was the same way, like I had some teachers here and there growing up, but I think playing by ear with Adrian, just jamming every day is, is what made us the musicians that we are today. His influences, you know, have definitely impacted his drum style that he developed, you know, throughout the years. Anywhere from, you know, started off with Neil Kirk from Rush, Stuart Copeland, Mike Portnoy, Vinnie Caliuta, Dave Weckl, obviously, John Blackwell, Virgil Donati, all these drummers that he, you know, grew up listening to and just mashed it all into one style and it, it became his own. I remember, I think it was probably like 2006, 2007, I mean, it's not that long ago. We still had cassette tapes back then and we had like a little tape recorder <laughs> that we got from like FYE or something. We would just hit record, put it in the corner of our room or garage, wherever we were playing and just jam and see what happens, you know, like, Either we were playing a Rush song that we learned uh, or just like original music that we started making and creating together. And that's what helped us get better. Uh, it wasn't really like teachers or music in school. Like it was just us jamming every day together. We were always challenging each other uh, musically because we just of our influences, you know, we were like, oh, well, what would Neil Peart do here? What would Mike Portnoy do, what kind of fill would, would he do here? And anyone who knows those drummers, like it's not it's not an easy task to learn those drum parts, you know. Being eight, nine years old, trying to mimic those guys, you know, it was like, we were playing music way over our heads. We just were trying to sound like them as much as we could. This eventually led to the birth of our band that we created, Third Escape. And we recorded one album back in 2012. Uh, I was a sophomore, Adrian was a junior in high school, like, you know, 15, 16 years old. That was like a highlight for our musical path that excelled. We played music all by ear. Uh, we didn't have anything charted out in the studio. We went in, we were just visually watching each other, you know, live record everything, everything. To this day, when I go back and listen to our first album, Planet, like, it's, I'm still just like, I can't believe that was the stuff that was coming out of, you know, our minds at that age. It was just like, it was still over our heads. It's, it's still challenging listening to that, you know. But yeah, Adrian is a one of a kind drummer, you know, and I'm not just saying that because he's my brother, but his style and technique is just so unique. I love playing with my brother any chance I get, even bringing uh, miles apart, uh, we all have our own lives now, but anytime I get to jam with him, it's like I never left. It's like we're both back in our room or in the garage just jamming and just looking at each other and just knowing that something great was gonna happen. But yeah, that's Adrian in a nutshell, so. <laughs>
graduating from high school, because he wanted sort of that well-rounded education and, you know, he was so engulfed in being drum set player, he wanted to go to MI, you know, Musicians Institute in LA. MI didn't work out, but there's this program here at Texas State under Butch Miles, if you make it, and to be a jazz studies major, that's going to be your focus for the majority of your undergrad or undergraduate degree. So why not just, you know, audition and see what happens? You never know. And of course, Adrian was very apprehensive thinking, well, I'm not worthy of that, you know, and I'm not the best jazz drummer and this and that, and I'll never get accepted and this and that. So, you know, it took some convincing and Adrian finally kind of came around and thought, well, I don't have any other options. He gave it a shot, came in the spring of 2014 and did his audition and he was a nervous wreck that whole week. Him walking out of that school, you know, just completely exhausted and drained from all the nerves that I know it took out of him, you know, just to do that and go through that process. And then not even a week later, you know, he got the email. And it's not every day that someone as high caliber as Butch Miles puts on paper. I like his style, his sense of groove, his feel, his time. This drummer is talented. I want him in my studio. So that was a big deal, you know? It was a big deal for me. I was a proud older brother. At that time, just, I, I had never felt more proud of Adrian, just that he accomplished something that he thought was impossible at the time. Even though he got accepted through the School of Music, you know, we all were kind of celebrating, uh, realizing that he was about to be a, a jazz performance major and study with the Butch Miles. It wasn't too long after that that he got an additional email that came from the actual university saying, we're, we're sorry to inform you that uh, we can't accept you at this time. And not gonna get into details specifically as to why, but let's just say that academically, he wasn't able to get accepted with the entire university as a whole. At that point, it didn't matter. He couldn't go to the school. He couldn't go to the university because there was just credits that he did not have completed while he was going to community college. So it didn't work out. On the flip side of that, the funny part was that, you know, he had already came and moved into my apartment with me that summer, basically assuming that he would be going to school that fall. So we thought, well, why don't you just stay here, you know, get a job and let's see if we can, you know, kind of get you in the scene anyway. And sure enough, I mean, just in the fact that that same year I was on working on my senior recital and I had the idea of having both my brothers um, be a part of that and play with me in my senior recital. So there was like a, a lot of long night rehearsals in the band hall uh, at the university in the rehearsal halls. And there were then people that started to hear him and think, well, who's this? Who's this in the school that's, you know, practicing and rehearsing and, you know, and it kind of got some of my friends, even people that weren't my friends, uh, a lot of performance majors started to hear him and then evidently he actually started getting invited to jam nights. There was a lot of salsa nights there with salsa bands, with jazz bands, and I started taking him to some of these jazz nights uh, where he would go into the club and just, you know, sit in for a while. He sat in on the Imbalas one night and there was somebody from another professional group out of San Antonio that was just, just so happened to be there and came up to me right away and said, hey, I want, I want your brother to, to sub. I need a sub for this gig that's happening in San Antonio like next week and he learned these songs and you know, I'll even mentor him and this and that. And I know, I know Adrian got so excited during that time and it was better than nothing, you know, it was something that just kind of fell into his lap even though it wasn't necessarily drum set specifically. He took it and he ran with it, and then just all of a sudden, not even being a music major, he was being asked to play here and there and here and there, to the point where I think it overwhelmed him, and it was just so shocking that he couldn't really accept every invitation. He was being very cautious and careful in his own insecurities at that time. He was so hungry just to be noticed on the drum set. That's all he cared about, and so Adrian has always been a very ambitious drummer. Maybe sometimes he bites off more than he can chew, maybe not. Nevertheless, he's super talented. He knows what he wants when he does go for things. He could sit down and memorize an entire big band tune and sit and play with a big band 
and play it better than somebody who does know how to read or sight read. And those were things that I always took notice of. So, or I can't really sit here and say that I'm the reason for that. All I did was try to open the door for him. Um, I have no responsibility or can take any credit as to where that talent came from. You know, I know I kind of gave him a push. Maybe it was a little too hard of a push at the time. Uh, those opportunities were still there for him. And I know uh, those are things that, you know, he'll always cherish and look back at and go, well, yeah, I got, I'm glad I got to be a part of that. And it's definitely made a difference, especially now with what he's doing. You know, time has gone by. I mean, we're talking close to 10 years now that, you know, this event happened where with Texas State and everything, and he kind of went through that phase. He hasn't given up. So I still find myself proud of him, you know, not just as a musician, but as an older brother that, you know, he's still doing what he loves. And that's all that matters. It's crazy what drummers go through. It's it's always a never-ending process. We're constantly rehearsing, practicing, listening to new material that's always on repeat. You you know, you feel the pressure. Everyone is counting on you to set up the tempos. It's easy to get carried away. You're almost going deaf in one ear or probably both. You have to set up an hour early before the gig. You know, you're probably the last one to fully tear down, taking about 10 trips back and forth, then unpacking again when you get home, and then finally getting home at 1 in the morning. Actually, maybe 2 in the morning if I get some water burger because playing a four-hour gig really works up an appetite. But I think what makes drumming so fun and amazing is that you're playing to music. And that is what helped me become a better drummer and a good listener because I do believe in learning music as written and surrendering to the music. But when I have the absolute freedom in creating or composing a drum part, it's rewarding and stimulating and it, and it feels less mechanical. It's almost like you have to put on two different types of hats when being a drummer. You know, it's like kind of like a like an artist or like a painter. You know, it's very similar because there are very talented artists that can copy an image and do it exact like a musician, note for note. And then there's other artists who can improvise from the top of their head and create something that has never been seen or heard. And the biggest reward is when that one person that has no connection to you whatsoever and that comes up to you in shock in awe of your craft because somehow they can feel it the most and it's always nice to hear a random person just give you a compliment and that's sometimes that's all it takes and the one person we need to listen to is our little voice in our heads saying yes you can and I think what this instrument has taught me is to be humble in order to succeed in this craft the talent alone is not enough to help you improve in any instrument. It takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and hard work, and dedication, and you got to give it your all, and you got to put all the love into this instrument to let it fully speak. 
even teaching the drums has taught me so much. It's giving me a bigger perspective on music and learning new information. And it's not just taking and borrowing the tricks and ideas. It's also about giving your knowledge to others. And that's what I love about drums is that the reward is watching a student smile, laugh and express themselves through their truest form. And I feel that's something I've learned from both my parents teaching for so many years and watching them come home tired yet excited at the same time because they have so many stories to tell about their day because they work with different types of kids and people and children. And I could see that they have had an impact or an effect on someone. And to me, that is success. And I hope to strive to be that someday. I think every drummer or musician, we start as a beginner and we will always be a beginner because we're always learning. We struggle, we make mistakes, even though those mistakes show that we're trying and we fall down a lot and have to get back up. We all go through these stages in our lives and none of us are perfect. We have to love ourselves and be proud of everything we do as human beings, whatever that is. We have to spread the joy, whether it's through music, film, or art. We have to find some sort of freedom to be our true selves. And the biggest question is, why do I do it? Because I just love it. I am the sky of endless notes. I am the beat that never sleeps. I am the echo in your ears, ringing from all those rim shots. I am the sweat coming down your forehead, back and hands after the show. I am driving, but really I am drumming. I am the first one to get water instead of beer. I am lost in the key signature and I have seemed to have lost my drum key. I am the aching back from loading all the way back from the track. I am the syncopated watch keeping time. I am the feel that makes everyone feel that fill. I am listening to junk that people call jazz and funk. I am the storm that crashes just like the symbols. I am the four P's, personality, perception, power, and pocket. I am the rhythm and soul in the music. I am on a journey searching for that beat. You see, I am a drummer. Mm -hmm.